I just got a, a personal thing about father and son that I can't get over. And that's why I could never really fully get over it with 50 Cent and Marquise. And we, we did those topics already. So go back and watch those and we give more details there. But looking at Master P and Lil Romeo, I did see Romeo make some type of statements like you give all the money to the people that you're trying to have sponsor, endorse you. Whatever. Like I'm paraphrasing, but that means that, you know, you feel like your family isn't getting the big direct bread, so to speak, or opportunities that you would see the amounts given to somebody else. That's almost like, let me give a comparison to that. Why well, I don't like that. Let me give you a comparison to that. Let's say um, I'm going to use two people that I'll fuck with heavy. Let me use Hitman and Show Off, right? Let's say Hitman gets on Twitter and Hitman tweets, um, ARP paid me a million dollars for my last two battles. Hashtag RBE shit, <laughs> right? And let's say Show Off calls me and says, yo, the most you ever paid me was 15 racks. How the fuck you out here giving Hitman type of money you gave him? And I'm a day one. And I've been here since like the second card. And I'm one of the faces of RB. I'm a brick. You know, you know what I'm saying? What, what I don't like is that people will, will, will turn the money that you have to spend to make the larger amounts and to progress the business, aka family business, like let's say Master P, based on what you did for them as individuals, if they're not in the same position as the other money makers. I hope I didn't say that too fast. Let's give an example of that. If Master P jumps out there and he gives um, a quarter million dollars to Lil Boosie to endorse his, his, his noodles that he's putting in stores, right? But then he turns around and he gives some type of stipend to his, to his son of, you know, 20 grand. If his son turns around and gets mad at him for that one, Lil, Lil Boosie is, is a social media tyrant. You know what I'm saying? Now, Master P didn't, you know, he didn't birth Lil Boosie. I don't even know how close they are. Maybe they cool. Let's, let's, let's say they just network. Let's say just business people. But you gave him five times what you gave his son. And your son is that's your blood, that's your that's your family, that's your heart, right? I hate when people do those type of comparisons because what little Boosie is doing at the business level of what the type of expense that I have to pay is nowhere near what little Romeo could do. And that's what happens over these years when you got somebody in Romeo's position continue to watch his father spend the type of money that he spends in certain directions. And let me make sure I clear this up for the people that just are not keeping up with the fact that I'm drawing parallels to just to make points that did not happen with Hitman and Show Off, y'all. OK, <laughs> Show Off is smart. Show Off is not a hater. Hitman is smart. Hitman is not a hater. I do my best by both of them based on what's going to turn around. You know what I'm saying? I've made money with both of them. Did I lose money with both of them? I don't know. Whatever. But you know what I'm saying? Every situation is different based on what you bring to the table as an individual when you're conducting business. You know what I'm saying? What you would do for somebody personally is supposed to be separate. That's a whole nother conversation to make those points. But I feel like somebody in, in Romeo's position can see, especially where, you know, we seen Romeo at the peak of his career when he was a hot topic and he was like, he was like a heartthrob and shit, and he's in magazines, and the women was after him. He was getting all this other traction in all these different areas in the industry. We don't see that for Romeo right now. I, I don't. And if I don't pay attention to that much, and you still come across my tape, like there's literally, let's say Young Thug. I can't name 10 Young Thug songs, but I know, and even before the YSL case, I know a lot of the fact that, that he's got a lot of traction out there. When you don't pay attention to somebody yet they constantly still come across your desk, that's how popping that they are. Romeo, I haven't heard his name, seen his face until this in years. Literally. Not a shot. Sorry it's true. So when you take somebody in Romeo's position and you watch your father continue to these new relations, these big checks or whatnot, these business ventures, and you not at your peak anymore. And you're like, oh, my father. Yeah, this nigga that was here today and gone tomorrow, you gave a quarter million dollars or a million dollars or whatever, and I'm sitting here with this? I just gave the analogy of, of why I think from a business perspective, it's wrong to look at shit like that. And you also got other tendencies that, I'm not saying this is with Romeo, other tendencies come into that, which is pure hating. 
right? Pure hating. I'm counting the next man's pockets that may be able to generate more business with me than I do with you. So the situation with me and you changes business-wise, right? So you got some hate that can be there. I don't know if that's a case of Romeo, but the other factor of it that I just don't fuck with is father and son. Pure. Father and son. There's only but so much Romeo could ever accuse his father of if we're talking about money or opportunity. Number one, the ultimate card in your hand, the ultimate big joker on the table is, motherfucker, I birthed you. That's the ultimate big joker right there. That's the obvious. We don't got to play that card. Let's, like, save that. You know, let's let that bump with my partner's small joker, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm speaking spades, y'all. Let me let that bump. You know what I mean? Like, we played our hands wrong with that. Let's talk about who Romeo is. Romeo would have even gotten into those peaks that we mentioned before, or had any of those opportunities. If his father wasn't Master P, he, he wouldn't have never had these opportunities to get out here and create his own name if it wasn't for Master P. One thing that we see in Bronny do right now is create his own name. You're never going to get out of LeBron's shadow because LeBron James is considered arguably the best sports figure across all sports in history. Like they'll argue like him and Brady and Jordan. Like, come on. Like, are we going to see another LeBron with his son? <laughs> the, the odds of that is pretty, pretty. You know what I'm saying? We don't, I don't know about that. I fuck with you, Bronny, but like, nah. But the kid. Went from, honestly, like when I first started watching Bronny because he was LeBron's son, that within itself is making a point, <laughs> right? But when I started watching him, he was okay. He was cool. He was another baller. I grew up with niggas that beat him. At one point, I might have been able to beat the earlier Bronny that I saw. Now the nigga, he progressed a lot. He's got way more athletic. He's got him faster. His, his offense, his bag is increased. Bag is not money. In basketball terms, bag is the type of moves that you have, y'all, for people that don't follow basketball. His bag is increased, his defense, like, and then he's got all this mentorship and, and tutelage that's coming his way from greats, like his father. He's probably in the backyard getting some of the, the biggest tips from LeBron James himself. You know what I'm saying? But, but watching his game now, the boy is good. He will eventually be able to be good enough to have his own lane. And that within itself is opportunity that millions and millions of kids will never have. Like, who who would gamble against Bronny getting in, into the NBA? Who would gamble against it? Your father's LeBron James. He's already in. He just got to not be injured. And even still, he probably come in injured. Your father's LeBron James. Bronny's in the league already. Any girlfriend that's that he, any girl he's fucking with right now is but everybody knows that. <laughs> I hope you got genuine niggas around you. Everybody knows he's in the league already. You know what I'm saying? So it's like Romeo. Similar thing. Master P ran one of the biggest movements in, in hip-hop. Hip, no limit. You coming behind that? The opportunities that that man has had. I'm not saying that he didn't deserve them. I'm not saying Romeo did not deserve his opportunities. I'm just trying to say there's a million people that probably deserve them just as much and would never come close to the opportunities that he's had because Master P ain't their father. So what the fuck you gonna do with that lane? Like, I don't want to see Bronny three years into the league and then turn into, um, what's what's the name that started fucking uh, playing like shit? Remember, he's getting to the free throw line and choking, like double pumping his free throws and shit. Um, and I think he was the number one pick. Anyway, y'all will hook me up either in the chat or, or in the comments. But the point being, like, if Bronny gets three years into his career and he starts playing like, 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 like total shit, like nowhere near even overseas, NBA, see, nothing level. You know what I'm saying? Yet the coaches are still starting them and we still seeing his career continue and he's still making all-star votes, all-star teams and all this type of shit. Who's going to respect it? Nobody. Want to know why? Because it's like, yo, you had this lane because of your father. And obviously he has talent too. So not to take that from him. But you also got this additional lane. Now go ahead and run the shit. Go ahead and ride down the lane. Go ahead and drive. If you drop, switch over to the fucking slow lane and end up getting on the shoulder pulled over with your hazards on, that's on you, my nigga. I put you in a fast lane 
where niggas was, wasn't even on a fucking highway of opportunity. You were born into the fast lane, my nigga. Come on. Like I said, we're not even going to play the big joker of you making it into this world. Just the opportunity in general. I can't fuck with it, son. I can't fuck with it. Fultz, thank you. Y'all know exactly what Markel Fultz. Y'all know exactly who I'm talking about. Come on, man. If he started playing like Markel Fultz and he was still getting started and making all making all star teams and shit, we'd be like, "Fuck out of here." Want to know why? Because we don't want to see you pampered because of who your father is. Now I don't think this is Ben. Sim I, I see you um in the chat. I don't think this is Ben Simmons uh comparison. <laughs> Leave better low, man. Leave better low. But um, I don't fuck with it, man. What's wrong with these kids, man? These kids coming up, coming up weird. 